All right, we're gonna be looking at diseases. One of my favorite units. I'm currently diseased. Actually, we should rephrase that. I am currently suffering from a cold. My mucous membranes in my nose are very irritable. And uh, anyways, I told you about it a little bit in class. Anyways, what kinds of diseases have been popular at our school recently? What have you been lucky enough to catch and survive? We're all pretty safe these days. We're in a good time and place in the world with a lot of uh, cures for various diseases, things that our ancestors had to worry about that don't even bug us anymore. So um, think about that. We've had some things going around here at school. Norovirus, pretty nasty, stomach, uh, influenza, all kinds of things. All right. Let's see, and you might have learned about some other diseases in some of your other classes. So we're looking at pathogens and diseases. So here's a cute little picture of a baby with some uh, runny nose material. A pathogen is an organism or a virus that causes disease. Remember our definition of virus is not considered alive because it doesn't have cells. It's not made up of cells, basically. That's just the way that we define it or a certain group of scientists define it. So a pathogen is something that causes disease and it can be an organism. It could be uh, an animal, it could be bacteria, it could be protist. Uh, we're going to see that and it could be a virus that causes it. It can also be a protein and that's the case in mad cow disease. It's actually caused by a prion, which is a type of protein. Very, very scary and interesting stuff. <laughs> And the host would be the thing that the pathogen is in invading. So in the case of this baby here, the human would be the host. And there are all kinds of animals out there and all of them have various pathogens that infect them. And there's some pretty crazy stuff that's out there uh, on YouTube that you can actually check out. Um, some great documentaries about pathogens and hosts. Various high resolution images of bacteria and things that exist. So what kinds of organisms can actually cause disease? Well, you've heard of the basic ones that are caused by bacteria or viruses. What about the more larger, scary ones that you can't really see? And when I sneeze and take a look at the stuff that comes out of my nose, it just looks like a bunch of gooey, gooey, goo goo, right? But I can't actually see the bacteria unless I use a very, very powerful microscope in some cases some cases an electron microscope so viruses bacteria actually fungi can actually cause diseases can you think pause the video think of something that causes uh think of a disease that's caused by fungi uh protists protozoa which are single-celled organisms uh, flatworms these get in the scary range for me these parasites the ones that you can actually see a tapeworm coming out of the body or roundworms in various internal organs that gets pretty nasty I'll show you some images in a second so uh, a few famous ones you can you don't have to use these you can use any others influenza is a disease caused by a virus tuberculosis which we'll go into more detail uh, a little bit later thrush is caused by a buildup of fungus actually if you take a lot of antibiotics and they're killing away a lot of the healthy normal bacteria that's in your digestive tract uh, that could actually allow fungi to grow and that's one of the reasons one of the causes of, of thrush so regular fungi and bacteria bacteria are competing in your body for real estate and if you take too many antibiotics and you destroy a lot of the bacteria then all of a sudden there's a lot more space for the fungi to grow and that can be thrush which could happen in the mouth or uh, other body cavities malaria you've heard of is caused by a protist that actually invades red blood cells uh, schistosomiasis, one of my favorite words to say, is caused by flatworms and that's a host for schistosomiasis is actually in snails. So a lot of snails can carry that and a type of roundworm is a hookworm and you'll see some close-up images. Not very attractive. Basically reproductive organs with teeth. All right, what else we have here? Here's some beautiful pictures. It's so amazing to see this stuff. Thank goodness our eyes cannot see this high resolution you know even with my glasses or spectacles that i'm wearing uh, i luckily i can't see all this stuff crawling all over my body at all times that would be completely scary and change my priorities in life 
hookworms. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like a little Halloween costume that somebody would wear. But uh, primarily, intend the, the intention of this is to bite on to the inside of your small intestine and not let go and just take a lot of uh, nutrients with it. And as it grows, it just starts shedding off little bits here and there and basically reproduces. It's like I said, a reproductive organ with teeth. And uh, if you're talking about a tapeworm, which we'll see in a second as well too, well, how does that actually reproduce? The life cycles of these things are amazing and the way that they reproduce and shed their eggs and get passed on and through the feces and if someone isn't washing their food properly, I mean, it's a perfect system for ensuring that these things stay alive. Uh, here's a picture of a cute little baby trying not to look at this next picture. You can fast forward 20 seconds if you don't want to see it. But anyways, oh, that's awesome. That got pulled out of a human. Okay. Gross. Just gross. But really fascinating. Now here's a little article. You can pause. I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but you can just check it out. Really, really interesting stuff here. That tapeworm got pulled out of that fish. But that's not what this article is about. This article says something pretty interesting. I should follow up on this. This is from over 10 years ago when I found this article. Okay, some ways to catch a disease. You can list a few things. So go ahead, pause the video, try to rattle off a few ways that you can actually catch a disease. Here's a list of a few of them. So let's go through. Obviously, you cut yourself. That's why you have to get stitches. That's why you put a band-aid on. That's why you put cream on it that tries to kill the bacteria. You get stitches, so you close it up uh, and prevent bacteria from entering the body. Otherwise, you can get infections. We're pretty good these days. We, we get a band-aid, we get some Neosporin or whatever kind of antibacterial medication you put on there, and uh, you get taken care of pretty well. Otherwise, things get infected, and uh, that could be a lot worse. We'll talk about infections a little bit later. Some pathogens can unfortunately get through your primary layer of defense, that is your skin. So there are some things that can actually penetrate through your skin, some diseases, and some little animals that can even uh, get into your pores. Pretty scary stuff. Droplets, when you cough and sneeze, that's one of the main ways that we get sick and pass diseases around in the school. We say to cover your hand, cover your uh, mouth when you sneeze, but don't sneeze into your hands. You know, it's carried through droplets and every droplet of sneeze that comes out of your nose or from your mouth contains uh, millions of viral particles if you're infected by a virus. Insects, really famous for passing diseases. Malaria, dengue fever, there's a whole bunch of things out there. Uh, well, that's going really slow. Food or water. So eating contaminated food, eating contaminated water, that's uh, the perfect way to get sick. And that's actually what happens in a lot of countries that don't have good sanitation systems. So very important to make sure your food is thoroughly cooked and also to make sure that you're drinking water that has been properly filtered. And last but not least, there's one more way, and these are the famous STDs that get passed around um, by you know how. Can you try to identify each of the following diseases? So just some pictures I've gathered here, see if you can figure out uh, what kinds they are. Are these, called, are these animals, are these viruses, are they bacterial infections or protists? See if, what you can identify from these images here. Look at that. That looks delicious. Looks like curly fries. We're looking at HIV right here. This is, uh, I think this is an artist's rendition, maybe, of red blood cells with uh, protists. Maybe, is that? I don't know. It looks too, too beautiful. C is Ebola virus. You may have heard of the Ebola virus. There's a movie, an old movie with Dustin Hoffman. It's kind of the story about that pretty scary thing. Be careful before you search for Ebola online, especially before you click on the Google images section. Um, I believe this is regular strep throat bacteria. Here's another hookworm. Here are some roundworms found in the intestine of a pig, I believe. And then G is showing another general structure of a type of uh, virus. A virus is basically, remember, a virus is not made up of cells, so this virus here is basically a protein coat, and there's nucleic acid, or DNA, or RNA that's found inside there. Finally, 
I think we're good here. Uh, what are antibiotics good for? You go to the doctor, the doctor gives you antibiotics to help you get over your particular disease. You have to be careful though, because antibiotics are only good for disrupting cell metabolism. So if the thing that's causing you to be sick is not actually cell-based, in other words, it's not bacteria, then the antibiotics are no good. Viruses, viruses, remember, are not made up of any cells, and so they are basically a protein coat with some DNA or RNA inside. There is no metabolism that is exhibited by these uh, particular particles. And so antibiotics cannot actually do anything to help you with that. So be careful about that. If your doctor prescribes you antibiotics, your doctor should be assuming that you, are, you have some kind of bacterial infection. So don't be afraid to ask your doctor, challenge him or her, and find out what's going on. I'm sorry, that's covered. They are effective against bacteria, but not viruses. Here is why it's specifically about metabolic pathways that these antibiotics are designed to destroy. All right, next up, we'll be looking at tuberculosis and some other diseases in detail. Please go ahead and post your questions.